Good evening. I wrap sing with your metal market wrap up and this wrap up is for the evening of Wednesday and we're now at the 21st of February 2024 610 p.m. Central Time. Now before I get too far I want to start off here and remind you that we have our what's up webinar tomorrow. That's Thursday. I will open the Zoom chat room at 1215. I begin the webinar at 1230. Many of you have signed up. I appreciate that. I've got plenty of questions, plenty of charts to review with you as well. Uh, but if you have a question or two and you sign up, there's an area when once you sign up, you'll get an email with your user ID and your password. You put your question in there. I'll cover it as best as I can. We got a lot of them. So time is going to be of utmost importance. Some real good questions too. So if you have any questions of us, call us at 866-973-2077. Remember, move your cursor right up here and that's how you get it. I'm not sending out any more invitations to anyone. So as far as I'm concerned, we're, we're full, but if you can squeeze in, it'd be great. All right. So let's talk a little bit about what we have coming up. Tomorrow we get jobless claims and they come out at 713. The last amount was 216 and that was up 4,000 from the prior week. We get the Federal Reserve National Activity Index at 730. S&P Global Group, well, they're going to come out with the preliminary February Manufacturing and Service Sector uh, Manager Indexes for the PMIs. And that comes out at 845 and we get existing home sales and that'll come out at nine o'clock. Now, we saw NVIDIA today, and that's obviously, uh, let me get rid of that. That's obviously the, the big important thing that went on during the day. And uh, the earnings were a beat. The revenues were a beat. Everything's a beat. Now the question is, how much of that is in the market? Where's it going to carry the market? We also saw the Federal Reserve come out today with their notes, and they are super restrictive. I mean, I saw nothing in those, and they had not seen the CPI and PPI numbers, nothing that was dovish anywhere that I was seeing. Um, and now having read those notes and then seeing th these strong numbers, the question becomes, was January an outlier month? And we will see that the next set of reports were nowhere near as, how do I say it, um, sticky inflation is this, maybe they slip a little bit back and that's what the market wants. Labor is still a very important issue if you read what they're doing. I, th I think the Fed is telegraphing to us that they need to get unemployment up probably closer to 4%. And then if they see the inflation numbers coming down, they can start thinking, the word is thinking about when to cut. I think May is off the table. I think you're now, the shift has happened to the June, July timeframe. And uh, that's at least what it, it appears after reading this for, if, if you know, put a gun to my head, that's what I'd be telling you where we're at. And of course, if you, a lot of you might want to do that. In the gold market, I predicted that we would fight a battle right here at the 18 uh, week moving average of closes. And I think you'd agree that's exactly what's occurring. The market is up a half a percentage point going into the Thursday trade. You can see how the market has rebounded off that break low that it had. And in the process, you still are in a downtrend. You still have the lower highs, the lower lows. You have to get over this high in order to break that. But here's your battleground. So the pros are probably selling against this 2039 level that we've talked about, stops over this 2043 area back, I think it's right over there, and we'll see what it does uh, it, it, through there. If it drops, I don't think you look for a big breakdown here any longer. Now I think you're looking at the 2027, 20, 2023 20, area, and if you get over that high, you're no longer in the downtrend. So interesting chart. Um, when we take a look at what you're doing in Bollinger Bands, they're far away from the market, so I don't think they're in play. And momentum, which had gotten oversold, has corrected itself. So I'm going to view the market still with a bearish eye on it, not a bullish eye, and getting over this high. And maybe I can even get you to the point where I tell you what that exactly is, if, if this lets me, it will. Here we go. It's all radio frequency signals that operate. There we go. 2047.30. So that would be the number from my perspective that you have to get back over in order to negate the downtrend. Barring that from right here to there is about an $800. Uh, that's a lot, don't get me wrong, but it, that, that's the risk on the shorts at that point. 
in the gold-silver ratio. It's corrected a bit, but not enough to get me that concern. It's still under the 18-day average of closes, which favors silver. The pattern, though, has gone from a lower Bollinger Band, which is typical, but not typical to go right up to the upper band, which it did, and then right back to what I call that line in the sand, the 18-day average of closes. In the process, what the market does is, is it starts defining what sideways action is, and that's exactly what you have going on right now. I give the bias to the upside, not a trend, might be over with the downtrend. It's probably waiting to see, does China pull any more moves? And they said they would, they being China in the month of March. Now we've seen some things going on. I'm waiting to see if they cut bank reserve ratio rates, other things that they can get going to help their economy along. I, I do believe they wanna do that. In the copper market, this has been pretty much a one-sided short covering event more than anything. Think about what's just happened. You went from your upper Bollinger Band to the lower band, and you're within striking distance of that high again. So just one of these walks in the park, and you're overbought in the process. A very, very difficult market to catch. Why? Uh, by the time you wanted to get short, you had a large risk. Anything under that 18-day average up there, and by the time you want to get long, you have a large risk under there. There are times markets do that, and I just teach, you walk away from them. You look for this chart setups that make more sense. In the platinum market, I see it void of a trend. I think it's gonna hang around the 18 day averages. It looks for better things to do at this point. And in the dollar index, you're down the key support in the market. Now, because you had an outside day down, if you take out that high tomorrow, it'd be a sign of a bear trap. Don't take that out. Market might be headed back to the 103.75 level. I don't understand why the market would fall apart right here, but it could. The chart action is not bullish at this point. It's bearish, if anything. Um, given that we have high interest rates and a strong economy, and I'm not seeing in the economy that is weakened. So to say, hey, we're coming back to the 103 area on a chart, if you close under that 103.75, you open up that possibility. You got to be able to prove you can do that. That'll be the hardest thing. So again, remember, you can move your cursor up to the top here at any point. That'll get you to the invite. Give it a click. I'll see you at the live webinar tomorrow, 1215. I'll open it, 1230, I start talking. You have yourself a great evening. Thanks for watching.